So um, I'm really glad to be around and I'll talk about the scope and the realization of the cogeneration plan that we have here at the Cypress Institute. Um, I'm pretty, particularly really happy because my previous speakers talk about big CSP plants, so we'll be talking about small CSP plants. And therefore, the, the outline of the presentation will be really brief introduction about concentrated solar technology. Then I'll talk about the, the project that we inaugurated about uh, three years ago, as Professor Panikol has mentioned. I'll give an, an overview of the facility regarding the controls, the heliostat field, the thermal storage tank, the integrated storage receiver that we have, and I will show, display some of our experimental results and I will conclude with the future work. So um, regarding PROTEAS facility, first of all, PROTEAS stands for Platform for Research, Observation and Technological Applications in Solar Energy. And at the same time, in Greek, it means first, PROTEAS. And it's actually it's the first CSP plan in Cyprus. And we're really happy because we, we want to demonstrate that Cyprus can be in the CSP map with this plant. Therefore, this is an aerial view of our plant where you can see we have the helostat field. We have the tower with the receiver and the thermal storage tank. Next to, the, next to it, we have the control center. We have an automated meteorological station, a cool material laboratory. And as it has been already mentioned, CSP usually has to go with PV also. So we have right now a PV backup unit, and, but at the, same time, at the same time, we are hybrid oriented to have uh, an oriented and a hybrid facility with PV plus CSP. The, the facility is quite new, so it was inaugurated in 2015, and uh, we're really happy because within the last three years, we have managed to be among the, the SFERA participants. SFERA stands for Solar Facilities for the European Research Area. Most of the participants are quite old players. It's, it's PSA from uh, Spain, it's a promise from France, it's an air from Italy, and even though we have really low experience within the last three years, we have managed to show that through our at work, we have gained to be within those uh, solar facilities and something that we're really proud of. So regarding the, the concentrated solar power technology, you have all heard about it, so I'll be really brief. The idea is that you need a reflector to concentrate the solar radiation into a receiver. There are several technologies which are divided into line and point concentrators. And in the Cyprus Institute, we have the privilege to have both line concentrators with Fresnel that my, Laric, that my colleague Alaric will display tomorrow. And at the same time, we have Proteas facility, which is our central tower receiver technology. The, this slide was shown by Professor Papa Nicolas, but I will spend some time on it because it's the main, it's the heart of the whole project. So the, the idea was, or the original concept was in 2008 and we have tried to make a cogeneration scheme in order to utilize all the available thermal energy from various subcomponents. The, the concept is quite the same. So we have the solar field where we store the solar heat. And from that point, we can go either directly for desalination usable, using multiple effect distillation technology, or we can go to power production through the power plant and then use the rejected heat for the cogeneration plant. So the major, the main scope of this pilot project was first of all to try to utilize all the available thermal energy from this plant. Therefore, we have the, the schematic with the major subcomponents and how do they actually operate is that you have the fluid in the thermal storage tank, it goes up into the receiver, it gets heated up, it returns back for storage and from that point on, you can go for the electricity production and at the same time for desalination, or you can do, depending on the demand, you can go either for one or for the other. So as soon as you actually capture the heat, you can go for the power block. So within our thermal storage tank, we have one uh, heat exchanger, which is um, immersed in the molten salt. So we have the water that goes on the one side and we have on the other side, the molten salt the water gets heated up and produces steam. When they, well, from that point, it can go to the steam turbine for the electricity production. Since we're talking for a cogeneration scheme, either we can use this steam prior 
to the steam to the steam turbine for the MED for the desalination, or after the steam turbine, we can go through after the ranking cycle to feed up the multiple effect distillation. In any case, the idea is to, to utilize all the available heat. Therefore, we have at the same time done several and we are doing several experiments in order to try to capture all the available heat sources from all subcomponents. So what we are looking now, we are looking about the to minimize the air losses from our cavity. So we can use that air, capture that air and use it also as available heat for the desalination. We are using cooling with water cooling for the receiver and then we can use either that cooling we could which can be either water or air cooling as a fluid for desalination and the two previous two purposes of the steam before the, the turbine and the steam after the ranking cycle. Regarding the facility, we, we are, can proudly say that despite, uh, except from the software from the Heliostats, we have managed and we have implemented and created all the control units. So currently we have about more than 420 sensors that are mainly uh, controlled by 10 virtual instruments. So they are used, it's LoveU. And we have several control stations where we actually acquire all the signals in order to process them and at the same time analyze, but have some interlocks because safety is among the highest priorities. My colleague Constantino Stokos has published several papers regarding the architecture and the implementation of the, of the control of the, of the facility, and you can find them in the literature. Uh, regarding the heliostat field, what we have, we have uh, 50 heliostats from CSIRO. There are five square meter each. There are parabolic curvature with three focal lengths. Uh, at this point, I would like to highlight the excellence collaboration that we actually have with CSIRO. And that's why we will implement 21 more heliostats in the near future. And this is also part of the, of the research that we're doing in our receiver. So as I'll show you, show you later on, our receiver seems to behave really well, better than expected. Therefore, the idea is that we will implement even more power to the field. And this is, will be done once again with this CSIRO due to the robustness of the helostats that we already have. We have a 13.8 ton molten salt tank. We, we, it is fully instrumented. We are a research laboratory. Therefore, we try to have the better, uh, the, as much uh, efficiency as we can in terms of signals. So we have several sensors along the pipe, uh, along the tank. In case of uh, lack of, of solar radiation that has never happened for several days in Cyprus, we have five electric heaters as a backup in case that we don't freeze the molten salt inside. And uh, once again, in the pipeline system, we have heat tracing for electrical heating and we have for several sensors in all the subcomponents, valves, pumps, and also regarding the heat tracing. The, the flagship of this, uh, of this concept, I must admit, that we must admit is the, is the iStore. The iStore is a pattern of the Cyprus Institute, which though it's come as a consequence of what Nicholas was saying about CS Pond, the, the idea is that we're having a hybrid receiver. So this hybrid receiver can be oper operated with molten salt as it is in the molten salt loop. But at the same time, we're also looking the, at the air side of the receiver. So as we saw in the previous presentations, the idea is to try to merge all things into, into one. So the, the name implies that it's integrated thermal energy storage and receiver because we want to have them both at the same time. So we're capturing the heat and at the same time we're storing the heat. And as you can see, there are, full, there are several instrumental ports along the receiver uh, because the idea is to try to be as precise in this, in this, uh, in this uh, receiver and its characterization. This is the first one and hopefully we are about to implement a second one, which will be the next phase of the receiver because we believe that, and we have seen throughout their experimental results, that this behavior is quite good. And uh, to show you some preliminary results, this is, a, this, is an, this is a CFD that was done prior to the, to the actual experimental results. So what we can see right here, we see how the temperature is, dis is distributed among the receiver. So it goes. 
sorry it needs to this yep yeah actually it is playing so you can see that the the temperature scale on the right and you can see how the temperature increases as we keep on adding more power into our receiver and the idea was to try to define whether it will be how the temperature distribution is seen first along the receiver and whether to define where the actual hot spots to prevent the the prevention of the any hot spots so that was done in using computational fluid dynamics and later on we have done the same with using actual experimental data so as you can see here we have an experimental data from this summer where in the first phase we are putting an amount of heliostats into the receiver so you can see the temperature distribution along the receiver then we turn the heliostats off and once again we put more power into the receiver so you can see how the temperature is being distributed along the receiver during these experimentals using these experiments parallel to that in following professor blanco's uh, era chart position here we have a parallel doing more validation in terms of our experimental results against modeling and here you can see once again some experimental results gained this summer where we have the temperature of our receiver and of motor salt tank where we're heating up cooling heating up cooling heating up and cooling and if we plot the the model results you can see that the model the heat and mass transfer model can actually predict really well the behavior of our system Last but not least, as I, have, as I have already mentioned, the, the Proteas facility is about to gain more heliostats. And this became due to the fact that we have actually had the last three years several experimental campaigns in order to characterize the receiver. And this, this number was obtained through the publication that we had in 2016, where we wanted to characterize the efficiency of the receiver only using molten salt for a given power and you can see that the the estimated efficiency thermal efficiency without air suction was about 67 percent and even though the the experimental data and the paper to be published will be done within the next few weeks i can say that the the efficiency is higher than 70 percent for this particular given thermal power after all this where do we stand so the the csp dsw concept has done the the technoeconomic study the concept and right now it's in the validation experimental validation phase which is ongoing there are already some thoughts about a bigger pile plant but i'm sure if you want have if you have more details you want have more details about that professor baba nicolas could give you more details on that last but not least for those of you who haven't actually visited the facility uh, we can arrange a tour on saturday afternoon after the after the conference uh, wrap-up session and we can give you a tour in the facility if you want to see more about and ask freely questions about the facility so we will the facility actually cannot be displayed it will look like we have an aerial, an aerial video but Okay, we will see it on Saturday if you visit the facility. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. And it was on time. Question. How much will, be, will we cost uh, that kind of installation, you think? You're talking about the specific installation, yeah, how much? You mentioned com commercialization, you said. I suppose that- uh, you, it, it, you depends, it depends on the scale. I mean, right now we have uh, 250 about the real facility. You have something to add? No? Well, uh, there was a technical economic study uh, back in 2010, which started this project in 2012, started, etc. So it's quite old, but the this facility, two things, is geared towards small scale. Few things that one should know about islands. In Cyprus right now, I believe probably I'm a few cents off, 
kilowatt hour for the consumer is 22 euro cents per kilowatt hour. Okay, mm -hmm. so you, and it's isolated. It's uh, there are no uh, connections to any uh, grid outside Cyprus. B. Uh, five percent of the power of Cyprus, like the power, goes to desalinate water. So the cogeneration is driven by that. Mm -hmm. The and I gave you the price of the if you buy the electricity, uh, the desalinated water is typically traded around between 80 cents to a, uh, a euro uh, per cubic ton. Giving that the technonomic study at that time, and things have improved a lot in the last uh, six years, uh, was giving us six, 16 cents per kilowatt hour for a megawatt uh, facility. This is an experiment, it's a validation experiment. It's not a production facility. That was 16 cent at that time. And about 85 euro cents per cubic ton of water.